Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. What is going on? You can't run a question like that. We're stopping service. For the first time ever, Chef Ramsay takes on a Mexican restaurant. This is the burrito here. Looks like someone's been sick on my plate. Where the food is being made for the masses. What were they expecting? 2,000 for dinner. But eaten by few. The owners. Paddy, I'm disgusted. Yolanda, that's a joke. And managers. It's a fucking prize! Seem to be on a siesta. Look at them. And only wake up when they argue with each other. Oh my god. I don't even know what could make it worse at this point. What do I do now? Where do I go, Vic? I'm this far from giving up. Could this be the one that leaves Chef Ramsay speechless? I never thought it was gonna be this bad. Maybe I'm too late. West Nyack, New York, 30 miles outside of New York City, an eclectic town that lies west of the Hudson River. West Nyack is home to Vic and Yolanda Flores, who previously owned another Mexican restaurant that failed. They wanted to try again, but didn't have the money, so they asked Yolanda's daughter, Patty, to use her credit and savings. I'm 100% owner on paper, but my stepfather, Vic, controls everything. All right. He didn't listen to me, he didn't listen to my daughter, he does whatever he wants to do. We have to discuss the problems. We'll discuss the problem, we go on and on. I thought this was a big opportunity, but from day one, it turned out to be a disaster. It's so tough, I can't chill it. <laughs> Initially, we were busy, and then after a while, it just, the numbers started dwindling. Is it normally this quiet? So I said, maybe we should make some changes. And he said, everything's fine. I've been thinking of changing the menu, but my husband say people like it. But how many people? We spend so much time just looking out the window, staring at each other. So how many tables are there? Not you know. Figuring what can we do to bring people in. It's like the blind leading the blind. He always thinks that he's right. He decorates the way he wants to. It looks like. Tijuana threw up in here. He has a stuffed chili pepper that he moves around named Manuel. That makes fun of it. The most that bothers me is that my daughter um, has ruined her credit. If I have to go cover a bounce check or something. She has problems in her marriage. I, I just feel very guilty that I put Patty in uh, this position. I never thought it was going to be this bad. Well, I realized it was bad and we can't pay our, our bills. I resent my mother. Um, I think she put her husband before me, and it's hurtful. I'm just hoping to God that Chef Ramsey will help us and um, that Big will listen to him. Otherwise, our personal lives are going to be changed drastically. Right, there's the sign, but grill 303. What the fuck is that? Maybe I'm too late. Grill, fiesta sunrise. Oh dear, oh dear. How are you? Very well indeed, thank you. Grill 303 or Not a fiesta? Not fiesta sunrise. Okay, good. Fiesta sunrise. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. I thought it was too late. I thought it was the new restaurant already. Oh, well, we don't change the, the little logo in the front. You haven't changed the logo on the front? No. And it's been like that for how long? For a year and a half. A year and a half? Yeah. OK. Right. Jesus, what's that? This is a new uh, favorite of margarita we have in here. So it's complimentary? Complimentary, exactly. Wow. Yeah. So you don't have to pay for drinks, you just come up here and... Well, you know, shop. when the people, they come in, we try to be, you know, mm -hmm. give us something to appetize her to start. Mm. Too strong? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Tequila. Mm. Right, that's put some warmth on my balls. Okay. Yes. Should we sit down? Please. Excellent. Come. So that's free. Right. Wow. Look at the size of this place. So how many seats have you got there? 120. 120. 120. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wow. How many's booked for lunch? Two tables. Okay. What would you recommend? The combination number one. 
Number one, come well, on. One Where's taco, it? you have one taco, one burrito, and one enchilada. Okay. Yeah, I'll try one of the fajitas as well. Okay. I'm hoping that Chef Ramsey kicks week is bad. What is that on there? Looks like I've got a sticker on my menu. Just trying to peel it off and it's bugging me. Ah. The art of Mexican cooking. What is that under there? The name of the... What name is that? It was uh, my another restaurant that uh, I used to have. Fiesta Garibaldi. Fiesta Garibaldi? Yes. So you brought the old menus from the old restaurant into the new restaurant and stuck some sellotape on there? Exactly. Yes. And is that restaurant still open? No, we're closed. And you called it Fiesta Sunrise as opposed to Fiesta Garibaldi? Correct, yes. Uh, I'm really confused, Vic. Same chef? Same chef. Same ingredients? Same ingredients. You brought the ingredients from the old restaurant into this restaurant? Oh, well, you know, different. We buy in fresh, you, you, but you bought the same fresh same ingredients. Menu. Yes, correct. Ooh, one for that. This is your combination, okay? Lovely. It's very hot plate, be careful. This is the burrito here. Yeah. It's hard to see that. It looks like someone's been sick on my plate. <laughs> Chicken's so dry. It tastes like it's been cooked weeks ago. The beef. Excuse me. It's impossible to swallow. I can see he didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Wow. How old is the rice? It looks like it's left over from Christmas. They cooked this uh, yesterday. Yesterday? How do you know that? I check in the kitchen. Check again for me, will you, please? Thank you. It looks older than fucking me. ¿Qué tiene? No le gustó. ¿Cuándo hicieron el arroz y por qué hoy no hicieron nuevos y todas las? It's dreadful. Absolutely fucking dreadful. How's it going? He hated the rice. Why? It's old. How old is it? They're disgusting. Yeah. Basically, they taste of shit. I was feel very embarrassed. First of all, there was the menu, and the more important thing there was the food. That is gross. Oh, now it's my fault. No, no, I'm just now asking you. Oh, no. So you bought the glasses from Gary Baldy as well. We Wait. invested a lot of money into this. We should have known this shit a year and a half ago. Yeah. Maybe that's the key when you're coming to Fiesta Sunrise. Stop off at the tequila bar, get drunk, and then enjoy the food. You know why you listen to me? Hi, Hello. how are you? Very well, thank you. How are you both? Good. I'm nice. Patty. And your husband and wife? I'm stepdaughter. Okay, so I thought you said you were partners. Excuse me. We're, right. we're all partners. Okay, yeah, great. Nice Likewise, and first name is? Yolanda. Yolanda. Right. I was the pia colada. That was delicious. Sad, that was the only thing that I enjoyed. Um, let's go over to the bar and have a little okay, chat, okay, yes? Okay. I'm hoping Chef Ramsey will convince Vic that change is good. You know, I think they're stuck in their ways. We should have stepped in a long time ago. Now it just seems like this is the end of our rope. Hopefully we can make some type of changes to save this business. All three of you pay yeah. for the business? No, this two. This two. <laughs> you two pay for the business, yes. and this man runs it? He ruins it. Ruins it, runs it, <laughs> runs it. Runs it or ruins it? Yeah, cool. so far it's fucking ruined, yeah? Did you have anything to do with the old business? I didn't. No? No. I did. You did. So that restaurant failed, and then you came to run this one for your wife and your stepdaughter. Yeah. But before you left, you grabbed the chicken, the menus, and the glasses. No, just the menu. OK. I'm trying to get my head around this. If you all own it, and he's running it, why aren't you involved? My opinion is, I think he just wanted us to finance him a restaurant. And I put a lot out here. I put my credit, my home. I borrowed money from my father-in-law. It's not important to him. It's not important to him to make things right with me. What does it take to break even? How much do we need to take a week to break even? 90,000. A month. A, a month, yeah. A month, so 22 grand a week. We do a third of that. So you're losing half a million dollars a year. What's the debt? About 850. 850,000. And you've only been open for 18 months. Right. What in the fuck have you been doing? No, I'm the big guy in here. Everything is going wrong. They're picking at me. Oh, I will see you later. Thank you, ladies. See you later, chef. Vic. That's embarrassing. Right now, they're all blaming each other and 
it's bloody obvious that Vic has run the place into the ground, but how can the women complain about that if they haven't put the time and effort in this place? So, personally, they're all to fucking blame. Coming up, Chef Ramsay uncovers the most disgusting... Oh, my God. ...horrifying... Look at the fat. ...and repulsive restaurant... What the fuck is that? ...that he's ever seen. Ladies and gentlemen, we're stopping service. And later, tensions finally reach a boiling point. I pay my bills. I pay your bills, too. Your bills. Could this be the restaurant that just can't be saved? I'm this far from giving up. Coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. This restaurant's run with dysfunctional management, and I'm dying to find out how the kitchen actually functions, because how is it possible for someone to cook food so bland as that? And tonight, I'm going to find out, but I'm not eating again, that's for sure. Do you like some appetizer? OK. Wow, look at the size of this kitchen. It's huge. Ambrosia. Ambrosia. Gordon. OK. In there, what's, the, what's that in there? The turbo fridge. Holy crap. Ugh. Oh, shit. When was the last time this was cleaned out? Yesterday. Um, what's this? The other rice. The famous rice? Yeah. That's the fresh rice, is it? So... I got served the old ship, yeah? What's this one? Where's that one from? Yesterday. Which one's the fresh one? I was disappointed a bit, and the cooks. It, it seems like I see this place for the first time. Hi, how are you? Can I get the chicken enchiladas, please? OK. When were these done? Yesterday. Yesterday? Fuck off, Vic. Please. They weren't done yesterday. OK. You can ask him his own language. And ask him very, very quickly, when were these cooked? Cuando cocinaron eso? Bien. Oh, so this was for last week? Of course they're from last week. They don't look like they're from oh, fucking lunchtime, do they? These chips are cardboard. The cases have no taste whatsoever. OK. Oh, my God. Look at the fat. Look. Why is there so much disgusting fat on there? What's wrong with those chips? I take only one. You say that it's a little crispy. You so you take them from the table back into the drawer. Did you see that? They come back from the table and you put them back into the drawer. Oh, he said he didn't touch it. He touched one. He said he touched one. But you're not supposed to. Fuck me. We're like a bunch of children that are doing the wrong thing. What are these? Vic. Yes, chef. These were fresh chives. Sell by date. Five months old. Where do you find that? I found them in the fucking fridge. Smell them. Vic. Look, let me just show you something. What is that? I'm getting nervous now. Talk to me. What is this? That's the fish we're using. That's the fish you're using? Oh, fuck me. Smell that in there. Is this today's fish? No, um, no. The fish, that was really scary because it was smelling bad already. I just couldn't believe it. Where's Patty? Yeah? Have a look at this. Oh, my God. Oh, look how crispy and curled up it is. Just touch that. Oh, it, it, it's, like, solidified. What's this here? This is tank chip. Why is it all wrapped up in tinfoil? Look at the colour of it. It's oxidised. And what's that in there? It's pieces of pork. That's pork. What have you done to it? Why is it all stuck in there with blood at the bottom of the tray? Why is that? How old is this stuff? Yesterday. Yesterday? He said Friday. Look at that. Oh, my God. <laughs> When's all this from? Friday. He took it out Friday. Oh. Everything's Friday. Look, let me just show you something. Look how green and slimy it is. That's from Friday. Look. Look at that. That's from Friday. 
Look at my fingers. Friday. Look. Look. There you go. That's from Friday. How do you say this in Spanish? This is not healthy. No muy saludable. Thank you. What is going on in here? A hungry cat would walk away from that. I was mortified. I felt embarrassed for letting this go on for so long. While customers in the dining room continue to eat subpar food, Chef Ramsay's kitchen investigation intensifies. What is going on here? What's that? The burrito. What's that one? The chicken enchiladas. Oh, how? Oh, my God. What's that? That was the ground beef. Ground beef? Half of it's fucking fat, you idiot. It's fatter than you! I felt satisfied that finally somebody called him out on his bullshit. Oh, shit! What's that? The bean. Oh, how? It's like a cement mixer. Are you fucking stupid? Who's controlling this? I am, Chef. You are. You are a walking disaster. Now I'm feeling like, like stupid. Lift it up. The fridge is full of shit. It, it's disgusting. I wasn't here on Saturday, but what were they expecting? Fucking 10,000 customers for lunch? Paddy, I'm fucking disgusted. Yolanda, that's a joke. I understand. I don't want people to get sick, and I don't want them to spread the word that food is bad here. You're overstaffed, underworked, shit food. I wouldn't trust you running a bar. Let alone a fucking restaurant. You must be out of your tiny mind. I don't care for your restaurant. I want to take that out there. I dare you. Take it out there. Go on. Give it to them. Yeah, there you go. It's with me. Look at me. Why wouldn't you take it out there? That's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Why are you serving it? You don't fucking care. Why? Why? Because you're serving that and trying to charge people money for that. That's why you don't care. I care for You don't care shit. No fucking way. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry, but we're stopping service. Shocked by disgrace. What is going on here? After disgrace. How do you say this in Spanish? This is not healthy. After disgrace. I want to take that out there. Chef Ramsay had seen enough and took matters into his own hands. You don't fucking care. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry. But we're stopping service. Everything you've had to drink, eat so far is all on the house. Sir, that thing in your hand, put it down. If you'd just seen where it's come from, like I have, you wouldn't be eating it. Very sorry. Close up. No pill anywhere. I was like, what the hell are you doing? You can't do that to my customers. By the way, there's your refried beans on the way out. Have a look at it. Oh, my God. I couldn't believe it. And uh, seeing all these people walking out of the restaurant, uh, it was like, this is the end. I think Vic got a dose of reality. He walked around like he was untouchable. So I was relieved that finally somebody else told him that he was responsible for a lot of this. While Vic supervises the cleanup, Chef Ramsay spends his time with a woman who is torn between her daughter and her husband. What I'm really concerned about is what's happening to your daughter. How did it start? Because something's blurring for me. My credit was messed up, so we use party for credit. Right. Too. She was clean. Cleared, yeah. You've destroyed your daughter's credit because now she has no choice. I mean, yes. you and her are in the shit, my darling. I know, sometimes I can sleep at night. Do you love Vic? I do, but it's different now, you know. No, before you came here, I said, if this doesn't work, I don't think you and I could be together anymore. Who's more important, your daughter or your husband? My daughter. At this point, you know, I realize it's not, not really a choice. Right now, the only way to show Paddy how much you care is to get involved. Yes. To help turn this business around. Oh, you tell me what to do. 
Another marriage that is affected by Fiesta Sunrise's debt is Patty and Dawn's. Usually, Dawn drops her off to avoid running into Vic, but on this occasion, Patty asked him to come in and meet Chef Ramsay. Good to see you. Good you well? to see you. I want to save the relationship with my husband because he's really angry at me for getting involved, and it just seems to be spiraling out of control. Um, obviously, um, Paddy explained, I'm absolutely furious in terms of the way the kitchen was run, the way the place has been abused, and I can't believe a guy like Vic would try to do so much under your own eyes without even you knowing anything about it. Are you aware of what's been going on? We fight all the time about it. Yeah. He saw it coming, and I said, no, he wouldn't do this, he wouldn't do that, and he said he's, he's not who he appears to be. No. That he's taking advantage of you yeah. and your mom. You know, even mom admitted last night that you had a clean credit record. Oh, my goodness. So that it's, got it's, that it, got abused. That's in the well, cover. That's one thing I'm mad at. You know, money um, can always be made and be paid back. Yep. The credit, he just never paid the, the monthly payment on. Do you think you can get more involved in terms of the support mechanism? Oh, sure. When I saw Diane, my reaction, it was like, oh, this is Patricia's husband. This has nothing to do with the business. Hi, Chef. Sit down. I'm trying to get to the bottom of it, Vic. I'm trying to understand the madness into how we've been operating. When you knew you were borrowing all that money from family, why weren't you being more honest about where the money was going? Do you know? God, it's not clear. Now it is. But when I ask him, are you going to give Patty any money? No, no, I don't think so. That really doesn't cut it. I believe Don's trying to stand up for me. He feels that Vic walks all over me. You're not going to give my wife any money? You're going to walk I, away I, with I, all you the want, cash? You have to go and sell him. I paid your mortgage here, you jerk off. One month, I paid $50,000, oh you douchebag. You don't even have a job. I don't have a job? What are you doing? Pal, I got Pal. a job. Oh, please, you're hunting. You're fishing. This is your, your job. I have downtime. I do what I want. Oh I pay my, my bills, God. pal. I pay yeah. my bills. And in yeah. fact, I pay your bills too. What bills? Relax, 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 relax. What? Relax, 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 what? relax, 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 relax. Done, pal. Oh, done. While Patty and Don were discussing their financial situation, are you aware of what's been going on? We fight all the time about it. Yeah. Vic joined the conversation. Sit down. Accusations were made. You don't even have a job. And Don and Vic were at war. I don't have a job. I pay my bills. And in fact, I pay your bills too, what bitch. Bills? What? Ah! What? Relax, relax. What? Relax, 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 what? Relax, 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 relax. Oh, okay, now, now, outside. Oh. Relax, relax, done, relax. Pal. Outside, huh? outside, done. outside, outside. Let's go. Let's go. You can't say that. You can't start talking about that. You can't start telling that. You can't. This ain't even half this shit. I'm upset. My husband really wanted to help, and he's probably going to be mad at me for putting him in a situation like this also. So, in a way, I'm mad. I'm here to help this place turn around. But to make this work, all three of you have to work as a team. While the family cools off, Chef Ramsay heads to the kitchen to come up with a game plan to fix the restaurant's biggest problem the food. Oh, my God. What in the fuck is that? That is a fucking joke. Victor. Right, ladies. I want us all to get involved in doing something together. Yeah? So I wanted a little fun element. You make a burrito, you make a burrito, you make a burrito, and the best one goes on the menu tonight. That's what I wanted to do. I couldn't do it because of these little fuckers here. Look at them. Oh, my God. I'm so sick to my stomach. I want to throw up because I had coffee here earlier. I don't know if the roach went through my cup. I didn't know about this problem either. Two dishwashers, two prep cooks. Who's cleaning around here? Do they seriously put food on those plates? Vic's here seven days a week. I don't know how he didn't realize the problems in the kitchen. Can't you see these? I'm trying to move forward. I'm trying to get going, but every time I put my foot on the ladder, I get knocked back. Did you know this was like this? I noticed, I noticed, but... Uh, you I knew it? Uh, yeah. We're going to have to do something. We cannot open. I need an exterminator here. 
How can I start in attempting to cook when the place is festered with cockroaches? I didn't expect this. I don't think it could get worse. I don't even know what could make it worse at this point. After Chef Ramsay's dirty discovery, he immediately called in an exterminator. I had no idea these were that bad. Bloody hell. I'm pulling my hair out now. I'm sorry, but you're running the place. Sorry. Oh, you're so stupid. Where do I go, Vic? I feel embarrassed with Chef Ramsay. I don't think that uh, we can make it in this restaurant. You can't run a fucking restaurant like that. You think I'm not? I'm, I'm fucking embarrassed You now. should be fucking embarrassed. I'm not putting one foot in that place until that place is fucking clean. Yes? You're right. Now you start getting those guys cleaning, yes? Yes, sir. With some fucking pride! Do you understand the word pride? Yes. It's not possible for someone to have his head so far in his arsehole. Fuck me. I was feeling so depressed because all the pressure that I have right now in the, in the restaurant and everybody picking everything about me. You know, he always thought he was right. Now he finally knows all of his mistakes. I'm very sorry, I'm very wow. sorry. I don't mean to hurt your feelings and I don't mean to hurt Danny's feelings. I'm very sorry. After taking time to reassess the situation and allow the exterminator to finish, Chef Ramsay returns more determined than ever. We are not giving up, do you understand? We cannot give up. Tonight we're gonna to open. The place has been cleaned, we're prepping up now, and in under two hours' time we'll be in a position to open up. And then we work it together. Yes, sir. Yeah, are you gonna listen? Yes. Due to last night's shutdown, Chef Ramsay was unable to experience a normal dinner service. Tonight, with the old food a thing of the past, he can finally observe the staff at work. Tonight, it's all about fresh food. Everything we prepped this morning, we cooked tonight fresh, yes? Yes, sir. Fresh. What is it? Fresh. Louder. Fresh. You may be small, but you've got a big pair of lungs. Fresh. Fresh. <laughs> they speak English. They're just being clever by ignoring me, yes? Yeah. Yeah, I know that. What do you guys like to drink? I'm going to get the chicken fajitas. And one beef enchilada. Thank you. With customers in the restaurant, Chef Ramsay is anxious to impress them with something Fiesta Sunrise has never had. Fresh food. Bloody hell. Get me Yolanda, please. Fucking hell. Yolanda, you cook at home, don't you? Yes. Yeah? What's wrong with this? Overcooked. Absolutely right. It's mush. We've got four chefs in the line. Not one of them can cook rice. The cooks don't even know what they're doing. I realize how bad it is today. I think you should start spending some time in here. Yeah. Can you cook rice now, Yolanda? Yes, sir. It's like a fucking golf ball. It's been a while, huh? With the rice disaster, the kitchen is now backed up and the customers are getting restless. Four chefs on the line. Yep. It doesn't seem to be happening fast. Yeah, can you speed up a little bit? I'm starving. <laughs> I just wish I had my food. Excuse me, guys. We have four people over here. We have to start moving. What is these guys doing? They don't even know who is, who's the leader over there. We're finished with our meals and the rest of our table hasn't even received their meals yeah, yet. Yeah, I know. Service, please. Pass it over. What's those black bits coming from the... From the top. From the top of the broiler. Yeah. Jesus Christ almighty. When was the last time the broiler was cleaned? The chefs that now is... They are crazy now. And this is like, this place is half full. What are you going to do when it's crowded and there's people waiting outside? This is unbelievable. What the fuck's happening? When was the broiler cleaned last, gentlemen? If he fucking tells me Friday one more time, I'll boil him. Every Sunday, they say. Every Sunday, my fucking ass. This is out of control. I mean, you got food. I'm full. You got fishy food. I've got four chefs that can't cook fucking rice. Soot all over the food. What is going on? 
fuck me? You're supposed to put salt on the food, not fucking soot. It's a joke. You're going? You're going to just leave? You're not going to last here. You can't employ these guys. One can't fucking clean, one can't cook rice. I never imagined how bad this restaurant was doing. I don't know what else could happen. I can't come to terms with what the fuck's happening. On the heels of another dreadful dinner service, Chef Ramsay knows he's running out of time to save this restaurant. Hard day today. What we took tonight, couldn't even afford to pay for the staff. That's how it is every day. Tonight is a perfect example that you're digging yourselves a bigger hole. We're tightening the noose around our necks. I, I, I've never been in this situation before. I'm now going to start taking drastic measures. We need help. A lot of help. A lot of help. I'm going back to New York City now, yeah? I have got to think of, uh, you know, an idea. Or we're screwed. I'm this far from giving up. Next. This place needs help. Despite Chef Ramsay's many improvements. I have an expert that's going to be here to help you. Now you have one beautiful <gasps> restaurant. Oh my God. Look at it. Are you happy? Yeah, I'm very happy. Will you tell that chubby face of yours? Does this restaurant have what it takes to make it? No more mistakes. Or is Fiesta Sunrise just beyond repair? Something's burning. What's going on, guys, please? This is idiot proof, and they still can't execute it. Holy fuck. Chef Ramsay stayed up most of the night in New York City trying to think of something or someone to help salvage Fiesta Sunrise. He returned the next day, reinvigorated with a comprehensive plan. Right, good morning. Good, good morning. morning Come round. After last night's dinner service, this place needs help. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Oh. I have an expert, OK, that I've taken care of that's going to be here to help you. She has the number one Mexican restaurant in Manhattan currently. She's from Mexico, and she seriously knows her Mexican cuisine. Oh. Say hello, please. Juliet Ballesteros, come and say hello, please. This is Yolanda. Hi. Yeah, one of the owners. If I got the call from Chef Ramsay, I got very excited. I will only do this for him. Vic, the gang up on you now. One, two, three, four against one now. You're outnumbered, big boy. Woohoo! I was pleasantly surprised when Chef Ramsay introduced Julieta because we really need the help. With the kitchen in good hands, next, Chef Ramsay reveals the work his design team did to modernize the restaurant. Oh my god! Come through, come through, come through. Now, look at it. <sighs> we got rid of the clutter. The ugly white banquet chairs have gone. Look what you can see now when you look down through there. It matches perfectly. Look at the tablecloths. Oh my god, look! Oh, I love it. I'm in you shock. Can. The shutters. Beautiful. All the crap gone off the ceiling. The walls have been done. That glass the walls is gone. gone. Stunning. Beautiful. Now you have one beautiful Mexican restaurant. Chef Ramsay is unbelievable. I can't believe that he worked all night to do all this. I used to get dizzy walking in here. I used to turn my stomach, and now I feel calm. And it looks like a place you'd want to stay and hang out and spend some time. Take a look at it. I love my new decoration. I love my chairs. I love my new place. Thank you very much. I just want you to run it, yeah, with your wife, with your daughter, and run it as a team. That's all I want. I promise to you, after this, no more mistakes. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Having updated the look, okay. Chef Ramsay moves on to the most significant change in his master plan for saving the restaurant. We've brought in an expert for the kitchen. We've revamped the dining room. And now the most important change that will be significant in turning this business around, and that's the menu. Do you like the new cover? No. No. Good, because that's what it's not going to be. There we go. Oh. That's what the menu is going to be. Simple, elegant, easy to read, easy to control, and maintain consistent standards. Uh, have a quick look. I'm very excited. 
I'm happy. Beautiful menu. Read over the menu. I'm going to spend some time in the kitchen with Juliet, yes? OK. Let's go, my darling. In order to ensure a successful relaunch, Chef Julieta stays on top of everything and everyone in the kitchen. The taquitos, just crispy enough to be like to have a crunch on your mouth, but don't, don't overcook them. I honestly never ever expected to be here tonight at relaunch night. What a fucking week. The toughest so far. So now they have to pull it off. They may have the best Mexican chef from Manhattan, but it's up to them now. Everything's here, they've got to do it. Let's see our meat. Oh, look, that's beautiful. Now that you've got it, you run it. And I'll be watching the service. Tonight is crunch time. This restaurant has to have a successful service tonight. OK, anything to say? I hope we work together as a team, because I want something to be proud of, and I'm proud of my family, and I'm happy. Everything is changed. Good. Ready? Ready. We're opening in five minutes. Smile! It's good. <laughs> I'm excited. <inside. laughs> it's as big as it can. You're like a sumo wrestler upside down. Smile! <laughs> With a contemporary new look and simplified menu, the success of Fiesta Sunrise now rests on the staff. I'm excited, but I just want everything to go okay. So I hope they could pull this off. You want an appetizer? We're done. We're going to take the guacamole. Mmm, that's good. It's for a kid. It's for a little girl. So don't put any peppers. They need somebody to be in charge. They need guidance, but they're willing to learn. Medium rare. Y este que está delgadito, ponlo para el medium. Chef, it says kind of cold. It went in, uh, oh, come on. Julieta. What happened? They said it's cold. Cold? Yeah, because it's hanging around. OK, uno nuevo en 20 segundos, por favor. Everything's set up. Everything's set up, so you know, this is idiot proof, and they still can't execute it. It's quite a worry. Come on, guys. Something's burning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They burned the nachos. They burned the nachos? What's going on, guys, please? How the fuck do we burn nachos? Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Yeah. What's this? Nachos flambe? After a shaky start, Bloody hell. the pressure is now on Vic Se tiene que comunicar, to get the restaurant running smoothly. Okay. This is excellent. Is it good? Very good. Presentation is beautiful. Dos carnes asadas, medium red, uno no arroz. Good. What do you think about the salsa? I like this. It has a nice texture. Thank you. Oh my god. I'm very excited. I'm, I'm very happy. For the first time, I see the people they're smiling. They're talking good things about the restaurant, especially about the food. It's a good piece of chicken. I really like the cafeteria. This is delicious. Oh, Thank you very much. Thank you. For the first time since it opened, Fiesta Sunrise is functioning properly. But they have one more hurdle to clear before the night can be considered a success. I just had a phone call. The mayor. Of Nyack's coming. The mayor? Yeah, the mayor. Oh. Yeah, great. Great. So he's arriving for dinner tonight. Wonderful. Great. Fantastic. We had the honor of having our local mayor visit us. Hi, how are you? Fabulous. You good? I was a little nervous because yeah. I wanted him to enjoy our new food and recommend it because it's some exposure locally. Hello, senores. Thank you for coming. Can I offer some appetizer? We'll get one of each appetizer. OK. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. And put it all out put here, it all right? Out here. Thank you. Vic, make sure that bear's OK. Make sure he has a jolly time, yes? What is this? Taquitos, uh, the appetizer. <laughs> Excellent. The taquito. Yeah, that was delicious. I'm coming back for those. <laughs> <laughs> it was excellent food. We had a great evening tonight. I would absolutely come here again. Thank you, Julieta. You're welcome. With dinner coming to a close and the mayor satisfied, Fiesta Sunrise finally saw a glimmer of hope. Can you believe we made it to tonight? Yeah. yeah.
extraordinary. I don't even know where to begin thanking Chef Ramsay. He came to me as a gift because I was really at the end of my rope and he brought back happiness between all of us and I, I can never thank him enough. I honestly never, ever, ever thought we were going to make it to tonight. You know that. Everybody had to wake up to get where we are now. Yes, yes. Chef. And Vic, 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 after all the mistakes you made and all the crap you're telling me, tonight, you were great. I was impressed with your performance tonight. I'll be honest, I was nervous. The tables, all the customers, everybody giving a good compliments about the food. Good. I was like so happy. For the first time since I arrived, I got to see your passion and your hunger to keep this place alive. That's what it's going to take. And I'd like to say that tonight would not have been of any significant improvement without the help of Julietta. Thank you, Julieta. You're welcome. We're doing this to give this place a hope. We all need to work as a team and as a family. Julieta, thank you personally. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. OK. Go back a week when I arrived. I didn't even know if I was in the right place. The signs with Grill 303. I couldn't understand what the hell was going on here. I thought I'd arrived too late. OK, come outside. Now, when we walk into the car park, yeah. yes, here's something that each and every one of your customers saw tonight. Oh, <laughs> oh. Yes, we did change it so when they park in front of the restaurant, they know where they're eating. <laughs> What's it called? Yes, I can't hear you. Yes, that's all right, I still chef. can't hear you. Fiesta Sunrise, Chef. Good. Make sure it stays up there. We stay, the one that stayed over there. Fiesta Sunrise. You got one more this way. Oh, you got it. Wow. Oh, my God, Chef. You did it. You put the Fiesta Sunrise in front of the mall. That's right, in front of the mall. Every day, 25,000 cars go past this restaurant. How could all those people drive by every day for 18 months and you not take advantage? of that. Are you mad? I'm happy. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> Everybody that drove past here tonight saw that. I'm not kissing you. Yeah? I don't, I don't OK, kiss good. You. Let's go. <laughs> OK. This is my American dream. And I think it's going to be one of the best Mexican restaurants in town. Keep it fresh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. My business is about to close. Gordon is in Hollywood. My God, you fucking idiots! To save a restaurant that is so unbelievable. Sir, put your hands in front of you. It feels more like the set of a Hollywood movie. Starring a desperate owner. There is a fucking boss here, so don't argue about everything. His angry son. Shut the fuck up! And stop picking on me. And a manager who just loves to decorate. I like to make pretty and nice. I don't respect more. I mean, what else does the guy do? He's an interior decorator, for God's sake. <laughs> this movie is part tragedy. Congratulations. It's a fucking disgrace. Part comedy. <laughs> Mate, I don't like it, but you clearly do. Good boy. And part drama. What the fuck is wrong with you? Don't fucking start with me. But for Gordon Ramsay, it's a shocking horror epic. Ah, what's the matter? That just might be his toughest challenge yet. Whenever I see that, I'm gonna be best off! Tonight, it's the world premiere of Sante La Brea. City of Angels, famous for its movie stars, stunning coastline, and healthy lifestyle. The ideal place to have a healthy restaurant. But in spite of its location, Sante La Brea is in critical condition. It's chewy. It's like meat, but not. Dean, the owner, and his two sons, Arthur and Sammy, have been running Sante for nearly 10 years. Dry red wine. So what, what does that mean? I don't really drink, bro. But business has dwindled to almost nothing and this father-son team is in desperate need of Gordon Ramsay's help. 
I'm the owner, I am the cook, I'm the janitor. I also do all the maintenance. Is the water still on? With a thin, very thin thread, I'm holding this place alive. You want to take his table? Maybe dad should. Hell fucking no. Uh, you want it to be good, right? This place is running like without a fucking captain. And I don't think my dad can really be a manager. But how about you just man up, man, sack up and do this shit, man? I always wanted to be surrounded with good, intelligent, strong people. I needed help, like genuine help. I hired Mark about six months ago. There's a lot of food here, I don't know who it's oh, for. My role here is a little bit undefined. It was really no job title. I'll be the hostess, I'm the best hostess. We don't know, we don't know what he does. I think of Mark more of the interior decorator. I want to make it feel like a, a nice, welcoming home. I do what needs to be done. I treat it as though it's mine. I've worked here since I was 15 years old. I don't remember the last time it was like busy. Just hold your breath, it's only seven o'clock. The nightmare is the fact that I'm not making money. My father is in at least $200,000 debt. I owe everybody. I owe the landlord, taxes, vendors, short on my mortgage. It's really sad. I, I gave it my all. I, it's my heart and my soul and my time. All right, man. All right. Everything is um, in jeopardy. I stand to lose everything. Right, I think we need Chef Sir Ramsey's help because we don't know what the fuck we're doing. Everyone at Santa La Brea is getting ready for Chef Ramsay's arrival. I'm nervous and excited about meeting Chef Ramsay. It's like being awake in a dream. Aurelio didn't show up. Fucking Aurelio didn't show up again. But owner Dean has just received upsetting news. He locked his phone and his home phone his is, phone is no answer. Aurelio, baby, where are you, man? I need you. His head chef, Aurelio, is nowhere to be found. Come over, OK? I really need you today. OK, bye. Aurelio is a no-show today, so it's like, uh, what else is new? Motherfucking Christ. I'm a little bit nervous to meet Chef Ramsey. I heard that guy's like fucking 6'2 and shit, like he's a fucking monster. La Brea Avenue, one of the busiest streets in LA and home to hundreds of successful restaurants. One thing's for sure, the location is not an issue. I'm about to find out what is. My God. How are you? Chef Ramsey. Good to meet you. This is Dean, yes? Yes, it is. Good to see you. Good to see you too. So, this is different. This is yes. a, this, welcome huh? to my place. It is different. Give me a... Um, a little tour? A little tour, yes. Okay. Uh, this has been remodeled lately, not too long ago. God. And I just put that in together. It's supposed to be wheat grass. It's easy. You've got all grass growing at the yes, corner. Yes, wheat grass growing. Oh, you grew that? Yes, we do. <laughs> Jesus Christ almighty. Actually... That there? Excellent. <laughs> okay. You gotta. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm not gonna give it to you. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> huh? Something about Chef Randy, it just uh, freezes a part of your, your, your brain. So, the food, tell me about the food. Is it all vegan? Vegetarian? No. 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 We're, we have chicken and fish. Chicken and fish. Yes, we do. I've always vegan. Everything in the kitchen is made, made in two versions. Either vegan versions or non-vegan versions. How many chefs have you got in the brigade? Uh, what a head fuck. I have, actually, I have none today. My chef didn't show up. Is he sick? Is he...? I don't know. He's just vanished. Everyone takes advantage of me. I'm not really making money. I actually was spending money for last year. What's the problem with the restaurant? Straight off, what is it? Really, money money is the issue here. Mark spent $5,000 on these things. They bought $5,000 worth of product. products. So Mark's your partner? Mark is not my partner. He's just lend me $10,000. Mark is just a big talker. He just talks too much. He makes makes many ideas he doesn't follow up with. Nice to meet you. Likewise, really, good really, to see really you. Nice to meet you. Really Heard nice. so much about you. Explain to me what you do. Um, right now, I've been trying to make the place just a little more hip, a little more fresh, a little more modern. Right. Okay, tell me about the design. What are you, what's the vision here? I want it to be like no other place you've ever seen. Which You're is definitely, there. definitely not wrong there. That's for sure. Thank yeah. you, thank you. I'm dying to get something to eat, get okay. up to speed of tasting some grass. Do you, yeah. Do you um, want a picture? I'm a little bit hot, so I'm going to sit outside in the okay. terrace and... Uh, and I'll bring you a menu. Yeah, get some fresh air. Nice to meet you, Mark. Nice to meet you, too. Really Likewise. good, really. Thank you. Sweaty hands. Your hands are sweaty. Mine? Yeah. I'm very hot, I'm very hot. And I only wore this for you, and it's hot, so I can change it now. Excellent. He is H-O-T hot. Hot, 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 hot. <laughs> All right, good afternoon, Chef Ramsey. Sammy, how are you, buddy? 
I'm all right, man. We got a couple of glasses. Thank you. What can Thank I get you. for you? I'll go for the patty melt, the turkey, please. Nice. Patty melt. OK. And then I'm fascinated, uh, which I've never come across before, the mogadufu. What is that? It's like a, it's like, it's like a stir fry, mixed vegetable stir fry with the, with black bean sauce. It's a little bit spicy. OK. Yeah. And then I'll finish off with the blackened salmon. Thank you. Brilliant. All right. Get it. Wow. Mono tofu. Mono tofu. Orale way. A grande order, man. Come on. Hey. What's the dog's name, please? Tubbs. Tubbs. Look at it. Turkey patty melt. Turkey patty melt. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. What is he eating right now that he's looking like he's picking through it like it's dog shit? Turkey melts. My God. Oh. If this restaurant prides itself on being healthy, that does not look healthy. That is dry, and they are disgusting. Come here. Look. Smell. Tubs. There you go. <laughs> A little bit more, Tubs. There you go, buddy. <laughs> He's feeding the turkey patty most of the dog, dude. I saw him feeding the burger to the dog. First of all, I'm so glad the dog ate it. <laughs> I was so glad, because I thought if the dog doesn't eat this burger, we're fucked. Uh, this here is a mobu dofu. <laughs> oh, come on. This is a joke. He doesn't like it. Didn't know mobu dofu means shit in Chinese. That's for sure. <laughs> He's looking laughing He's ripping. He's laughing He's his ripping. Ass. Rice cooked to hell. And... I'm stuck here in the center of La Brea with my do food. <laughs> oh, come on. That is shocking. My God. That's what he was, that's what he was ripping apart. Oh, that's horrible, though. Maybe he can get through to Dean about the food. You can smell it, you can taste it, you can talk. And this is the salmon here. Black and salmon. Black and salmon, absolutely. OK. Very black. Dry and it tastes way too fishy for salmon. Like it's been in a refrigeration unit that's not even properly cool. Disgusting. God, the food is bad. How was it? Just in terms of the presentation, it looked like a dog's dinner. Mm. Then you get to taste it. Mm -hmm. It's hideous. Healthy food yeah. does not have to look like shit and taste crap. No, I, really suck. I agree with you. So, oh god, oh, no. Jesus, oh, not that bad. Show me where the salmon is. It was smelling fishy. Unfucking believable. Fresh salmon. Oh dear. That's wild salmon. When did it come in? Yesterday. Yesterday. My salmon was very fishy. You got all that in there yesterday? Yes. Yeah. So you got the salmon and the turkey in the same container melting. So the chicken comes in fresh? Yes, it does. Yeah. I guess this is extra, you know, whatever we have it. Why are you lying? No, I'm not lying to you. This is not exactly what I expected to find in a healthy restaurant. What else is in here? One of Chef Ramsay found all the stuff that's been there for a long time. It's rotten. It was very disturbing to me. Your food is about as healthy as these vegetables. I didn't realize that nobody looks in the refrigerator. Were you going to serve this tonight? No. All of a sudden, Dean, there's a lot of food in there that you're not serving. When I smell bullshit, hey, I go straight for the fucking juggler. I felt destroyed. It was unbelievable. I, I feel like breaking down completely. I. Let the chef take care of the, 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 the um, refrigerator. I don't look into it. This is your business. Yes, it is. It is true. There's nothing for me to say. The biggest problem in this restaurant is you. Congratulations. It's a fucking disgrace. Coming up. Mother Doofus a pile of shit! Gordon transforms Dean. What? Oh, you fucking idiot! And gets him to take control of his business. There is a boss here! Even if I'm wrong, just do it! 
but there is still chaos in the kitchen. You took a right fucking right. order! What the fuck is wrong with you? Don't fucking start with me! Can manager Mark take the heat? <sighs> and then later, one shocking surprise. Sir, put your hands in front of you. That will change Santi La Brea forever. After Gordon discovered the deplorable conditions of the food storage, it's rotten. Owner Dean is devastated. I mean, it's okay if I sit down. Dad got very emotional. I felt like the hopelessness kind of feeling from him, you know, in a way. And it was really fucking sad. What happened today, man, will not happen again. Because we got Mr. Gordon on we'll the other side. Again. Yeah, you get you goddamn right it won't ever happen again. And all these things supposed to be dumped by goddamn Aurelio yesterday. Look at it, there he is. Where have you been? Yeah. I think bring that somewhere. Two hours late, Chef Aurelio finally shows up for work. You better fucking deal with it like a man. That's all I got to say. What happened with all this stuff inside the refrigerator is all bad and moldy and shit and stuff like that. We should have dumped it before. Do you remember our plant's supposed to be dumped? You know, it's okay. Who cares? Dude, yo, man, we had a fucked up situation today, man. Can we even trust this guy? Can we trust you anymore or what? I mean, nah, I don't know. Man. No, man, we trust him. Take him back with open arms. Yeah, seriously. It's, it's the cancer you're talking we can't, about. We can't do this anymore. My dad's got no balls, man. He got no balls in terms of this. He can't get rid of them. Can you get inside and look and see what's going on, please? Take care of everything. I'm distressed. You know, I can't serve any food without him. I'm stuck here. I have no choice. I got to keep him because I wouldn't have no one otherwise. Ugh. I see the tears falling, Dad. I really want to cry. Sorry, man. It's going to be good. Come here. Oh, give me a hug, man. Show me some love. Let's see some, let's see some, some fatherly love and shit. All this chaos, all this confusions. This is the worst thing can happen to a restaurant owner, actually. It's kind of cringing to me. It makes me feel bad. Four for dinner? Yes. Come on with me, please. Judas Burgers it is, and for yourself, sir. Uh, the saffron? Now that Chef Aurelio is here for dinner, Gordon has an opportunity to see if the restaurant food is any better when the chef is around. Did you see the fridge? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, anything to say, or? No, I don't have anything. Nothing to say. It's my fault. He knows it's my fault, I guess. It is, it is my responsibility, after all. I'm just a cook. I'm not in touch. I can do whatever I want here, so, you know, that's why I never go somewhere else. I need pants, dude. Pants? I need pants. You have some more pants ready? No. The chef hasn't put the stuff back in the fridge? They, they didn't, you, you know, they got busy, so. They got busy? Mamma mia. Why are you scared of the chefs? Uh, because if they leave, nobody is going to be served. Aurelio as one of those entities in my life that I can live with and I can live without. I'm tired, dude. We have a uh, Mediterranean platter. It's like hummus, tabbouleh, That's great. Bob ganoush, pita. That's like good. It's too heavy. It's too square. It's not the worst. <laughs> it's not the best, though. It's, not good. it's an hour into service, and dinner conversation at this restaurant is primarily about the poor food. Bite my fork, whatever. Will you, will you bite this and tell me this is good? Okay. Will you bite this? Maybe I should get them a recipe of how to make the medicine. Excited about eating healthily this evening? No, we're not very happy with this. No, right. So it's not very good. Damn. Thank you. Enjoy. Having heard the general sentiment of the customers, Gordon heads back to the kitchen to get to the root of the problem. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What is that? <laughs> you what almost that? got in altogether. to get uh, Unduck. It's duck, but it's unduck. It's fake, unduck. fake duck. Fake duck. So you call it what? We call it unduck. 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 Right now, I feel like I'm getting completely fucked. Is that popular? Yeah, it is. Actually, a lot of people ask for that, too. Unduck. Fuck duck. Fuck duck. <laughs> That's fake fish. Fake fish. And it looks like fish and tastes like fish, and it's got seaweed on, on the outside. We have everything that's on. 
This is incredible. So far, I've had unduck, unfish, and unfucking believable. What a mess. Not my favorite. No. A. God bless Los Angeles. You're joking, aren't you? After a disappointing dinner service. Thank you so much. I hope to guys see you guys again. Thanks again. Have a great week. Gordon confronts the staff with the harsh reality of the situation. I'm somewhat confused. Um, nobody seems to take and accept responsibility. Everybody's a free-for-all. No rules, no one's fear for the job, just a lack of care. I, mean, I think a manager needs to make sure that things happen. All these things that are unattended to, I, I have to take blame for. It's all me. For some reason, people are not listening to me. My management style is not functional, it's not working. Let me tell you, yeah, what the problem is here at Sante. Lack of management, yeah, that's clear, that's happening. But let me tell you the biggest problem here. The biggest problem here is the food. Not just the food, it's the bullshit. Everything's a gimmick on chicken, on duck. Your philosophy is not healthy style. The shit I uncovered in the freezer, the discovery in the fridge. You've got grass hanging from the ceiling. It's like fucking Lord of the Flies up there. Have you seen the shit hovering around there? <laughs> I am not going any further until this place is fucking clean. And I mean spotless. If a health inspector had witnessed what I witnessed, just in one of the fridges, bang, game over. Clean this fucking pigsty. This place does not deserve an A. And the only thing you're getting from me tonight is that, an F. There, it's staying on. And guys, I'll take it down tomorrow, personally, yeah, when it's up to the standard of an A. Now move your fucking asses. There, it's staying on. After giving Santi La Brea an F for their filthy kitchen. I'll take it down tomorrow, personally, yeah, when it's up to the standard of an A. Now move your asses. The staff worked through the night. The flask coming out of this one. Cleaning every inch of the restaurant. I certainly wasn't going to have Gordon come through and say, what is the matter here? Did you not listen? A thorough cleaning is the first step that Santi La Brea has taken in the right direction. But before Gordon can change the menu or the food, he needs to change its owner. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you feeling? <laughs> very good. Thank yeah. you so much. I'm tough fine. day yesterday. Yes, it was very tough. Yeah, really tough, but tougher than I expected. What worries me is that the burden is on these. You're not letting go. You're not releasing any of that pressure. It must be so frustrating inside because nobody's listening, Dean. That's the problem. The chef's not even listening. You employ them. They don't employ you. You have to know how to talk to these staff. You're correct. Yeah. We're now standing on the top of the canyon. Nobody, yeah, can hear us. So what I want you to do is let it out. Let's start off with Mark first, yeah? What have you got to say to him? Get, get the fuck out of my life. I don't want you around. Yeah. That's it. That's how you tell staff. Pathetic. Here we go. Mark. Understand that you're here to run the restaurant, yeah? Not to run crap up my walls. Start listening to me now. Chef Aurelio, if you ever leave my kitchen that state again, look for a new job, you little fucker! Aurelio. Why, what, what's going on with you? Didn't I tell you to go ahead and clean the goddamn refrigerator? Fuck. It's not difficult, it's business. You have to get a grip before it's too late. I want to know from you, face to face, that you are going to accept responsibility and, more importantly, take control. I've got to hear you. It is hard for me to let go, but, you know, I have to take Chef Ramsey's advice. Mark! That's better. Good. Listen, no more shit, no more fucking fucking around, no Good. more whatever it is that you bring, no more feng shui shit, and don't put the Good. mirror here. The, Good. I want to put that there. Just Good. do it for me this time, please. This just, just this time. What the hell? No more, OK? Good. No more. Excellent. Aurelio. Give it to him, you limp dick! Aurelio, what the fuck? I know you for so long, and I know your family. I was stupid enough one, one time, three times, four times, six times, Good. ten times I took you back, man. Who the fuck is in charge in this motherfucking kitchen? 
Good. Well done. Now, that sounds like a boss. It feels great to just scream out and say those things. I'm not used to doing that. Wake up, you idiots! Last one. Here we go. Wake up, you fucking idiots! God damn it! Excellent. Good. Hey. Gordon right now kind of gave me a little bit more confidence. I'm ready now to go ahead and do my job a lot better. How'd you feel? Great. Having completed the exercise, Dean returns to Sante and puts Gordon's lesson into action. Unfortunately, it's with his son. What the hell happened to all my apples here? Oh, please, man, I took this shit out. I don't want to see the, the end of the bottles here. I took them out, I'm not putting them back. Don't talk to me like this anymore, okay? okay. Don't fuck, even if I'm fucking wrong. Dude, so you were my dad exploded. It was a Kodak fucking moment, man. There is a fucking boss here. So don't argue about everything. Just do it. It's my bullshit. I'm responsible. <laughs> fucking, he laid it out, man. Like a little bellow to fucking flame and shit came out. It was awesome. It was great. At the end of your sentences, say, but I'll do whatever you want, sir. OK, mashing. Am I the boss here or not? You are. Then. Listen, listen to me, that's it. Smash. After Dean released his frustration, everything settled down, just in time for Gordon to inspect the kitchen. Good. Peppers, fresh, yes? Fresh it is. Good. Gordon came in and he kind of checked everything out and yeah, everything was good. Everything was clean, top notch. Welcome back, yes? Yeah. yeah. Keep it there. Yes. Yes? Thank God it, the F did not stay more than, you know, 10 hours <laughs> overnight. Never been. With the kitchen now in proper working condition, Gordon turns his attention to the food. Two specials on the menu tonight, yes? First dish is a halibut. We're going to cook it in the marinade. Second dish, salad of shrimp, local shrimp. It's really nice to see Chef Ramsay be able to take his je ne sais quoi and bring it down to our level, like we're doing ghetto Gordon. Shrimp dotted around. It's a celebration of California, and now, on halibut, two vibrant, straightforward dishes. It's 30 minutes before dinner service, and although everything appears to be moving in the right direction, Mom. Gordon gathers the group for an important meeting. Now, Dean, yesterday, mm -hmm. there were some serious infractions in this restaurant. Yes. Spoiled food, yeah, problems throughout, yes? Here he is. Do what you have to do. Sir, put your hands in front of you. Palms together. Okay. Do what you have to do. It is. Sir, put your hands in front of you. Palms together. I had, whoa, like what? What the heck is that? What did I do? I said, where did I break the law? I it was a scary moment. I am fed up, up to here, with you, walking around, picking up after your chef, running around after your sons, after Mark. Tonight, you're not doing that. You're not touching anything tonight. You're going to tell them exactly what you're doing. Run your business vocally. You're not getting arrested, you silly Billy. Hey, relax. Look at him. He's about to cry. Jesus no, Christ. I see what you mean. You're yes, right. that's right. My dad's supposed to be a manager. He's supposed to be verbally conducting the situation, as opposed to, like, physically cleaning them after people. Thank you, Bob. OK, first table's just about to arrive. Let's go. Good luck, by the way. Thank you. Try not to show the handcuffs. Keep them tucked in there, yes? <laughs> Let's go. OK, guys. I'm supposed to be the boss, so I can't help you, OK? Just do a little bit you can. I'm very, very excited about tonight, and I, I'm looking forward to see this place swamped. Now I'm going to try not to let things go out of hand. Good evening. Nice to see you. Hi, Come through, how please. Are you? Sorry to keep you waiting. This is Mark, our hostess Hi. for the evening. Hi. How nice are to you? see you. I get you guys some beer and wine tonight? Push the specials, yes? Yes. Now, I'm going to explain the specials real briefly. Now, we have a, a spiced halibut, which is marinated in uh, fresh yogurt. And then we also have a shrimp salad. The specials are really good, um, and they'll be gone quickly. I'll have the special, the halibut special. You got it. OK, this is for table two, two halibut specials. Showtime. I can't, I can't clap. But... Did you want something to drink? Okay, Moretti, Ann. Uh, Moretti, well. Moretti, 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 Moretti. Mark, you're struggling again. Oh, no, use a napkin. It was a warm night here in L.A. 
I thought, oh, I'll be smart. I'll wear a light shirt. Hi, ladies. How are you? Good. How are you? Did you guys have a reservation? He's touching them with his sweaty palms. Don't touch the customers. I wasn't sweating that much, but the shirt was catching all of my sweat. Oh. I don't like wearing deodorant. What can I tell you? Damp it down or dry or absorb. I don't know, but it's all leaking over. Oh, my God. Oh, mother fuck. <laughs> don't touch anything. I can't help it. It was torturing to have to be in a handcuffs and just trying to work normal way. What is this doing here? Can you take it to the front, please? Right now, hurry, hurry, hurry up. Like, run, 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 run. Come on. I'm always tying the loose ends for everyone. Now I cannot. Okay, halibut now, OK? One halibut for this order. This is one of them for table two. Get the halibut ready? This is ready. Take that, take that, take that. Oh, ladies. Thank you. Enjoy. Looks beautiful. Oh, it's really good. The specials are nearly sold out, which is great news. Now, Mark, well, he's just sweating like a pig, running around like a headless chicken and sweating all over the place. As for Dean, I don't think this guy's finding it easy. He's struggling not to run around after his own staff. Crazy. This one is this one. You sure of table two? Yes, yes, just go. It's fine. Table two. That's the last halibut, right? Did um, you want any of the specials? Because I could maybe hold one, because I think they're going to be gone. Oh, yes. Yes. I definitely want to hold Okay, I'm going to tell them to hold those three halibuts, OK, until they get your order, all right? Aurelio, Aurelio, will you hold three of uh, the specials on table four? Give me a ticket, please. OK. Give me a ticket. All right. The halibut, I'm out of right now. So sorry. You said you still have one halibut left? Or no, no more, no more, no more. That's so it. what is this going to do with this one? Mark. Can you come here for a second? First of all, you took an order? You took a fucking order! Don't fucking do it, god damn it! Mark should be taking an order. He doesn't know how to take an order. He's, he's always making mistakes. And I let it out. Just listen listen, listen to me. I understand. I understand. I'm the fucking boss I understand. here. I understand. I understand. It's crystal clear. It's crystal clear, Dean. Crystal clear. I made a poor choice at that moment. It's not like I spit in someone's suit. Are you guys at a pause or no, stand no. Thank you so much. Do you have any more wine or anything? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. You've got menus tucked under your sweaty arms. Oh, my God. Oh, my Oh, you can't tuck menus under your sweaty armpits and then hand them out. Yeah, I, I hear you. Mark, please. What is he doing now? Menus tucked under his armpit. Gordon, yeah, please, they send him home. Send them. I don't need them. It's your fucking member of staff. The motherfucker has to leave. Mark has this very, very bad sweaty armpits, and he put the menu under his arm. You have to take care of that. It was ugly. Go home and change that shirt, goddammit. Please, please. It, Just run, run back, yes, okay? Yes, run yes, back. You got it, you got Do it. Do something. As Mark heads home to get a new shirt, back at the restaurant, customers are lining up, and Gordon is on a mission of his own. Hello, sir. Um, I've got a friend that sweats a lot. I'm looking for a really strong antiperspirant, but really strong. Thank you. And I'll take both of these. Thank you, boss. Thank you. It's a different shirt. If it's heavier, I'll probably sweat more, but at least people won't see it because it's a dark shirt, hopefully. If this one takes the sweat, Gordon will probably kick my fucking ass. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good, two seconds. Two seconds. Okay, now stop that. Thank you, sir. Okay. Hey, quick. Jesus Christ. Secret, made for a lady, strong enough for a man. He's a fucking funny little limey bastard. All right, come here, let's go. I would like to think you've learned your lesson. Look at me. If Eon does these, yes, yes I want a guarantee they're going to run your business. Yes. And not pick up things. Yes. Bob, do the honors, please. Thank you. Sure. I'm positive. Yeah? Don't fall back to your old ways. Oh. Thank you, Officer Bob. Thank you, sir. Let's go. Dino, move, huh? Yes, 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 yes. Come on. No, no, no. Ahorita. When you're ready, I can take another order. Let me know. Once Dean's cuffs are released, his managerial skills are put to the test. There's a hair in our face. No way. Yeah, and then her posture was cool. Oh, my God, that is hair. What the fuck is this?
Mick, another order of penny? It's gonna take long. I don't know if they wanna wait. Do, do it now. I'm waiting to boil this shit, man. Just take the hot water from here. Just take it easy, relax. I don't wanna take relax. it easy. Relax, relax. Just take it out of there. I just want Aurelio to understand what's really going on. I needed to be the boss. I needed to actually do my job. You want to cook? I don't want to cook. No, I want you to cook. Yes. Just listen okay, to me. go to the back. Don't stay here. Go I want to stay back. here, and you're going to do what I'm asking. Go just to the do back. it. Go no. to the back. Aurelio. Stupid. Shit, what a fucking attitude. After another disappointing dinner service comes to an end... Thank you, thank you, thank you. Gordon tries to make sense of one of the most bizarre evenings he's ever witnessed. The good news first. Within 15 minutes of announcing the specials, the halibut sold out. Dean, tonight showed significant signs yeah, of becoming a better manager. Unfortunately, I had to handcuff you in order to get that out of you. The biggest problem still in this restaurant is the food. The feedback is the food is bland, boring, and barely mediocre. Tomorrow, we are going to relaunch this restaurant. I want people to say, La Sante, yes, is the healthy restaurant where the food tastes great. Coming up. What? 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 A crisis in the kitchen pushes Dean over the edge. Vesta! And Aurelio out the door. What's the matter? You are not going to believe what happens next. Aurelio! On Kitchen Nightmares. If there were ever a restaurant that needed a makeover, it was Santi La Brea, and Gordon's crew worked through the night to pull it off. Excited? Big, big, big day today. Take off your blindfolds. The new Santi La Brea. Clean, fresh, and green. This is beautiful. We decluttered the canopy. Inviting. Fresh. Here we go. Outside patio. Oh right, come oh through. Look. Oh no dirty white curtain. Fresh shades. Hand painted blinds. New benches. Oh, this is fucking comfortable, man. Look at the color of it. Nice, new, oh. vibrant. It's almost like the dream materialized. Everything I was dreaming about it just came and flashing in my face. What a change. What a vibrant. <gasps> Sexy, healthy change. Awesome. I'm moved to tears so much. He's a brilliant man. So cool. Ready to go inside? Oh, yes. Yes? Look at this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We painted the entire restaurant. We added a beautiful mural on the wall. I was floored. I mean, if my mouth could, like, unhook, it would have done that. No more tacky plastic tablecloths. A proper, healthy, vibrant, fresh restaurant. No clutter. You two. Just don't clutter the place I up again. Not, not this is what LA wants. This makes an incredible statement. They took what we had and they made it better and smarter and beautiful. Now this. Oh my God. The menu, oh absolutely my God. crucial. When you come into something healthy and vibrant. Oh Jesus Christ, oh my God. My dad got really emotional when he saw the new menu. I'm so happy to see my dad happy. We're not looking through 150 bits of crap. It's fresh, and if it's not fresh, it's not on there. I'm happy for you. You deserve it, and your sons deserve it. Thank you, man. No question this is a good beginning. I would never, ever be able to do it without Chef Hans. OK, absorb, have some fun, and I'll see you in five, 10 minutes, yes? Well done. In preparation for the big relaunch, Gordon introduces the staff to the new dishes. Gone is the bland mogo dufu and dried out fish. In their place, Wonderful chilled tomato soup, egg white frittata, the eggplants, sea bass, cassoulet, the lentils, the salads, and your favorite, the tofu, yeah? It's yes. been grilled. It's the most important night so far of Santa Libre. Mark, you're hosting tonight. Greet, sit them down, don't take any orders. You got it. <laughs> no worries. Well, don't just stand there staring at the food. Get some knife and fork to taste it. It was an amazing day today. Brand new restaurant, brand new menu, brand new feeling, brand new man. It's relaunch night, and time for the world premiere of the new Sante La Brea. Hi, how are you guys tonight? How are we doing? We OK? I don't want to see clutter here, all right? I want everything to be clean at all times, OK? Halibut? Wonderful. Wonderful. Can you just eat that? Sea bass. Yeah. Like the cheese appetizer? Sure. This mushroom with the cheese first, and then the tuna and the beet salad. Thank you, man. Did you decide if you like any wine? Santa Barbara. The Santa Barbara? You got it. Thank you. Thank you. What are you doing? 
Can I, you don't want me to bring one? I thought you, he wants me to sell one, so I'm trying to... Do you want me to just tell them then? Okay. Mark, once again, he didn't listen to my instruction, and he was taking an order. And uh, I wanted to take control of that. Don't, I already told you once. Who the fuck is in charge? Don't take an order. I won't, I won't. Okay, relax, I won't. Tell me once, I'm telling you again. Don't take an order. Don't Dean is the boss, Dean is the owner. Dean's word is gold. Dean's feeling the pressure as more and more customers arrive at Sante. So put things in, the, in, in its own place and don't eat, don't drink, don't do anything here. This is not good, okay? Whenever I see that, I'm gonna be best off! And his kitchen staff is starting to feel it too. Just hurry up a little. You gotta, you gotta run a little bit. Just uh, hurry up a little bit. No, just I hurry up a little bit. I yeah. need the food out. I can do those two things at the same time. Just listen to what I'm saying. Do it fast. You really want us to live? Look, I keep in mind what I say, okay? What? I what? I'm keeping in mind what I say, goddammit. Stop it. Goodbye. Get the fuck out of my life. I'll do it. Next. Let's go. Eat salad. Be right with you in a second. You want to treat me like he's all the obvious employee? Yeah, that's a bullshit. I'm not like the other guys. Where is our grilled cheese and our hummus? Hey, what? Come here. What's going on? What the fuck is going on? What's the matter? Get all the right, fuck out of here. I don't need Hold on. Get out. I'm tired of this shit. Aurelio! Aurelio! Fucking relaunch night. Come on. What? What's going on? What the fuck is going on? What's the matter? We get right, the fuck right. out of here. I don't need them. Fuck. Fed up with Dean's new management style, Chef Aurelio takes off during the restaurant's most important dinner service. Aurelio! Fucking relaunch night. Come on. What in the fuck? What happened? He's going like this, you know, going slowly. I can't fucking wait for it. I said, hurry up and listen to me. He don't listen. So, God damn it, I don't care. Enough already. It's the end of the line. I'm not going to take it anymore. This is unbelievable. The fucking chef's run. Dean's going fucking crazy. What have I created? A monster said, run your business, but don't start really slamming into everybody. The restaurant's filling up. This guy's fucking mad. I just want to I wanna say I'm sorry to the chef brands. I want to tell him who is Dean, you know, like, he's not a good man. Come here, come I just want to say I'm sorry. Okay, no, 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 but listen, okay. listen, come here. This is important. This is launch night. I can't beg the fucker. You do care, don't I you? I can't. I beg you all my okay. life. At least, you don't want to listen least, to me. At least pay me the rest of the money, yo. That's all you fucking care about. I'm not going to be in your goddamn oh. set. I'm not going to work fuck without fuck pay. Okay, the... how much money you owe? He owed me 140 bucks. Okay, here, here, here. No, 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 come here. There's That's 100. Okay. okay, the rest that comes after service. Please. I'm just going to do this tonight for, because of him. Yeah. OK, thank you. Thank you. Come here. Calm down. Big deep breath, yeah? Pretend you're in a yoga class. Just cool, cool. Now, discipline, yeah? But don't screw it, OK? Big deep breath. It's an hour into dinner service. Right, thank you, yes? And Aurelio's absence has caused a backup in the kitchen. Grill four portions, so you stay in front, yeah? Yeah. She's ready to stab, stab herself in the head. Out in the dining room, customers are left waiting for their food. We've been sitting here for like 15 minutes. 15 minutes only? I have some people waiting here for longer than that. Sorry about Don't that. Like this is brand new. I'm, I, will, I'm... I was watching everything fall apart. You know, food coming out. Our customers were like waiting, hungry, waiting, hungry, waiting, hungry. With a dining room full of hungry customers, Gordon tries to salvage the evening. We started off badly. Yes? yes. Really badly. Yes. Can we at least finish? Strong. You have to, look at me, motivate the team as well, yes? Get a grip. Yes. Let's go, yes? Go. Breathe deep. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about anything. Just do the best you can. See, man, for table one, right? You want. Go. OK, one more thing. This restaurant belongs to all of us. Eggplants. We all have a lot of passion for it. Oh, yeah, that's good. Now it seems like we're closer together. Look at it, it's beautiful. It does, it does. Yeah, mine's really good. And I really like the sauce and the vegetables too. So. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. It made me feel this much better. <laughs> I learned a lot from this experience about myself, what I'm capable of, what I can do. I learned how to manage this place. <laughs> After a less than spectacular start, the staff at Sante Labrea rallies and pulls off a successful relaunch.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We've come a long way since the beginning of the week. Trust me, this place definitely felt like a completely different restaurant from the one I entered when I first arrived here. Hey, each and every one of you cared, full of passion, energetic, and more importantly, we didn't give up. Work together as a team, yes? You guys are a family. Okay, good night. Good to see you. Thank yeah? you so much. Line-wise, good to see you too. Appreciate Put a smile on that face. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Yeah? Pleasure meeting you. I need two minutes with you. Guys, give me two minutes, please, yes? Right, take a seat. Okay. You have everything you need yes. to make this place successful. I honestly, truly believe in it. So manage it and don't be scared. I'll try. I seriously want this to work. I'm rooting for your success. Thank you so much. Yeah. Genius. Thank you again. Thank you, thank you, sir. <laughs> Make it work. You got two great boys there. Huh? Molodufu. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs> Molodufu. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, a fine dining bistro. Welcome to Cafe 36. That's not so fine. The plates look like they've been picked up at the local flea market. We are losing 10000 a month. A well-intentioned owner is desperate. What's at stake is my dream. You are seriously, seriously leading this place into bankruptcy. His loyal wife couldn't be any more supportive. And I'm very proud of my husband to say, take this chance. But with a head chef that is clueless. It's the most expensive vegetable on the market. You want that? It's come from the different part of the world, chef. It comes from the different part of the world. Are you listening to this? A sous chef with a bad attitude. No, I didn't. You said you got one there, and it's two veggies. I said three. Look at the rhymes. Guys full of shit. I'm a better chef than Pinto. And a waitstaff that is ready to mutiny. You're hiding, and you need to be fired. Pinto has one speed, and that speed is fuck you. What are you doing? You're not a real chef, are you? Gordon is ready to crack the whip. We work at it. Now, come on! In an attempt to turn this nightmare back into a dream. It's hard when you just put your faith in something you really believe and believe and believe, and it's still not coming. It hurts. Coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. LaGrange, Illinois, a well-to-do commuter town outside of Chicago. Terry and Carol were high school sweethearts here. Two years ago, they fulfilled a dream and bought Cafe 36, an upscale French bistro. Here you are. Oh, thank you very much. And for you, sir, my dream was to have my own restaurant and be my own boss. OK, thank you. I'm 58 years old is at a time when most people are thinking about retirement. I'm just going to get out of the way for a while, unless you... Okay, 6.30. Unless you want me to do something. I was very nervous with the whole idea, but let's try. Let's go forward with the dream that he wants to do. Okay, talk to you later. It gets me upset that sometimes he doesn't delegate. I'll do the vacuuming. I'll clean the bathrooms. I'll get the bar stocked. Leave this here for Terry. You I go do what you got to do, then we'll go smoke. Terry, why are you doing this work? And you have a staff standing back there. Why are you doing it? OK. And the onion soup? And the onion soup. It's coming up. That's coming up right now. Pino, he's really a great chef. The food is tasty, it's good, and it's done right. Pinto's sanitation skills aren't the greatest. He, uh, he tastes a lot of his food as he's making it. The running joke is, you know, do you want a side of saliva with that? I don't like sticking my fingers in food. I'll give you a whole thing. I think that Cafe 36 would be a better restaurant without Pinto. But well, nobody's calling out tickets, so I don't know, you know? I mean, it's just somebody's got to be in charge. This is the problem. Terry and Carol keep talking about how Pinto is so awesome. And everybody else knows Pinto really can't run a kitchen. Table 13 waited 25 minutes for a house salad and a soup. The customer's reaction in the restaurant is very positive. Mine is not cooked. They were raw. I'm going to send mine back. 
really, it's it, we're hurting at this time. We'll have nights that we'll only see six or eight people for dinner service. We just don't understand what's not working. I am so sick to my stomach. I have chest pains. Carol and I have never taken a paycheck since we started the business. Here's the bills. More. More bills. I really love my husband. want his dream to come true, that's all. It's that drive and that passion of the dream to say we want to make it happen. Thank you. Topic 36. OK. Comes Ramsey. Where? I just saw him walk by the window. Hi. Hello, Mr. Ramsey. Good afternoon. Nice sir. to see you. Pleasure to have you with us. My name is Jerry Gilmer. I'm Jerry. one of the owners. This is my wife, Carol. Ah. How do you do? How are you? Very nice to meet uh, you. My, very my happy pleasure. Happy to have you here. I'm so very happy to be here. Very excited. What kind of restaurant are you running? We try to style ourselves after what we call an American bistro. American We're trying bistro. to have fresh seafood, steaks, chops, sandwiches, uh, pasta. Yeah. I can't wait to yeah. taste. OK. Right over here, sir. Oh, the restaurant's big. How many seats have you got? Uh, we can seat about 85 in the main dining room. Right. And how many's booked for lunch today? We have 11 people in the restaurant right wow. now, and that's unfortunately a little bit of a typical day for us. Uh -huh. This is Douglas. Douglas uh, will be your Douglas, server today. When Chef Ramsay walked through our doors, you know, I was feeling really good. And I thought, you know, this is going to be great. Uh, the specials today, the uh, risotto today is a uh, wild mushroom. That's pretty good. I'm dying to taste the risotto. OK. Yeah. Uh, this fascinates me. I've never seen a duck and a strawberry together. Yes. Well, you yeah. have good chance to try it. And I'll take that rare, please. Rare? Thank sure. you so much. The of the day is a sautéed Atlantic salmon. I serve an awful lot of them, but I'm not a big fan of any crepes at all. Doug, it's a special. I know. OK, so the crepes aren't special? No, I don't think so. OK. Uh, <laughs> well, why don't we give them a shot? Then let's give me. them a shot. Yeah, exactly. Then you can tell me. I love that honesty. Right. Let's go for the crepes. I know not to order the crepes, because they were frozen. Frozen crepes are crap. I got three courses. Pinto, please fire the crepe risotto and the duck salad, please. For Chef Ramsay to coming in, it's, it's very exciting. Am I nervous? No. I think everything is good. Always makes me feel nervous when I sit next to plastic grapes caked in dust. And the plates look like they've been picked up at the local flea market or the dollar shop. Is this the normal um, quite so lunch? Is normally this? Lunches, we average three or four people. Three or four? Yeah. Unfortunately, one of the problems is we don't get the food out in time for it to do a <laughs> business lunch. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Let me go check on your food. Certainly. Show. You ready? He wants a duck salad rare. That doesn't look very rare, right? No, I'll get it. You know what? Bring out the whole thing. The guy's full of shit. I'm ready for a man. No one to know what comes for lunch. It's taking this long. Coming out way too slow. Well, we fired it all. Does food always take this long? Yeah. I see your food put up. I was just going to go grab it. I'm relying on the Chicago the suburb's train being pushed through the dining room is so old-fashioned. All right, Chef. Wow. Wild mushroom the train. The plate is it. hot. That's the wild mushroom risotto. Yeah. And oh, your man. duck salad, rare, yeah. with strawberries. Place are dirty. They're just old plates, or? Yeah. OK. Risotto. And I really got nervous when he started eating. But I believe that the food here is well well above excellence. The risotto's exploded, it's mush, and it just disintegrates in your mouth. And it's very salty. We'll bypass that. Don't ask him to make another one. Way too salty. The little rice is mushy. OK. Just telling you what he's saying. That's fine. The risotto came out nice. It was good. It was really good. I always know that risotto was overcooked all the time. Once Gordon Ramsay comes in here and tells him this is mush, this is you know, it's like, yeah, I've been saying that for months, boy. Orange strawberry duck. Right. Oh. Jesus. What a bizarre combination. What's with the walnuts? What are they doing? Candied them. The candied walnuts. Candied walnuts. As if we need more sweet on there. That definitely didn't work. Pinto, the crepes. OK. When you see a chef putting those ingredients together, it's rather sad, really. Clearly, no one's controlling him, and he hasn't got a fucking clue. OK, mm. chef, the next course, your salmon crepes. They come out like that normally? All the time. What have they done? Chop them up? Uh, no, that's how he makes them all the time. He just puts extra on top, I believe. 
Who makes the crepes? Um, I believe the crepes are store bought. Mm. No. Yeah. Damn. Look at that. And this is the speciality. I'm fed up with eating crap of the day. When you think of a crepe, you think of something nice, light, crispy, tasty, not something mushy and hideous. That is shocking. I thought you were looking Are out you for me. Are you taking this away? Oh, yes, please. That's yeah. looking out for you. Just even going to bypass the pigs. I don't like it. None of them. I don't think there was anything he even said was OK. I was just in shock. And where did you train from? I trained uh, in Italy. And working in an Italian restaurant? Correct. I thought the risotto was an insult. It was mush. OK. Where is the risotto rice? It's in the cooler. Can you get it to me? Yes. I'm just amazed that you lived in Italy that length of time. You studied there, you worked there, and they didn't even teach you how to make risotto. What's that date? 2.20. What's the date today? 28. You got the balls to walk in here on a Thursday and serve that shit from a week ago. It's mush. There was no bad on uh, still food. Nothing smelled bad. Why in your tiny mind do you think it's still fresh from last Saturday? It was in the uh, reaching cooler. A reaching cooler confirms in your mind that it's fresh. Well, I'm sorry, but I mean, you know, this is really weird for me. This has been going on for a while. Pinto tries to stretch the food as far as it can go, and sometimes too far. Bring me everything in that fridge as a week old. You call yourself the executive chef? You should be ashamed. You served me risotto from a week old. Oh, my god. All this is from last week. I was very shocked to find out uh, that we were not serving fresh products. It was such a horrible feeling. And then I was getting very angry and mad inside myself to say, how can my staff do this? Chopped clams. We're keeping clams from a week ago. We'll smell go. that. What does it smell of? That doesn't smell good. Smell? Congratulations. You haven't managed to kill anybody off. What are you doing? You're not a real chef, are you? Yes, I am. What? Any chef that keeps hold of that crap in his fridge for a week, two weeks, in my mind, has given up. A lack of caring, a lack of responsibility, and more importantly, ignorance. Fuck me, what more can you say? Coming up, this fucking thing. What's got Gordon running circles around Cafe 36? Embarrassing. Could it be that the chefs can't get any food out of the kitchen? I think they gotta catch the shrimp first. Could it be that the waiters are completely fed up? It's gonna be like a uh, five minutes. All right, they told me that like 30 minutes okay. ago. Pinto has one speed, and that's fuck you. Or could it be that the owners are in denial? You are seriously, seriously leading this place into bankruptcy. One thing's for sure. We don't know our ass from a whole nother. Gordon oh. is in for the challenge of the year. You're not a real chef, are you? That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. Carol and Terry have put everything they have into Cafe 36. Unfortunately, this restaurant may be too far gone to save. That lunchtime, that was a tough one, that one. Are you trained in the business? Have you had a restaurant no, before? No, I have not. No, right. not me. Have you ever had a restaurant before? Absolutely not. You've never had a restaurant no. before? No. Terry, sorry, how much did you pay for the business? A million two five. No, million no. one. Million one, I'm sorry. We put our own savings, okay. IRA accounts. We had a large four-bedroom home that we sold and used the, the proceeds and the escrow from that to put into the business. And you're here lunch and dinner? Yes. Carol drops me off in the morning. <laughs> we only have one car between us. Uh, we sold the other one. Everything is very scary right now for Terry and I to see where we're headed. It's hard. It's hard when you just put your faith in something and really believe and believe and believe, and it's still not coming. I respect the level of sacrifice here, but you're pondering and querying to why the business isn't coming through the door. Correct. It's on the back of the food. When food's crap, it's crap. The chef's cooking me a risotto with rice that's eight days old. I, I just, I'm still in shock. Yeah. You have to focus on the wrong, not ignore it. Right. Yes. We certainly got an eye opener today. Yeah, I'm panicking <laughs> on both of your behalf. I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. You know that. No. Don't take it the wrong way, please. Right. No, I understand. And I'm here to make this work. You must understand that. And that's, you know, the objective from day one. Um, good you. to catch Thank up. You. Yeah, I, we got we got we got a mountain to climb, and yes. uh, it's uh, it's a tough one. 
As the staff gets ready for dinner service, Gordon ventures into the kitchen to do a more comprehensive investigation. Pesto, vinaigrette, looks like oil out of my car engine. Unbelievable. Everything's frozen. Frozen and defrosted. This place is a mess. Pinto, certified exec. What's going on here? What's all this stuff floating in water? That's a group are taken out of from the freezer. I keep it uh, fresh frozen. Fresh frozen? Yes, sir. There's no such thing. It's either fresh or it's frozen. I understand. What's this in water? It's a salmon, chef. Frozen? Yeah. It was a fresh frozen. If you keep it frozen, fresh frozen, it stays more fresh. It's mad. It is. You're making all this fresh stuff, freezing it, and then taking it out two portions at a time per day. Because it doesn't sell enough. And what? If, if you had had plenty of business like this. Nothing to do with business. That's lazy. Everything's frozen. Trout stuffing. So we take it out. We slow thaw it. We, yeah, cold. Cold. Boom. Cold. Yeah, slow thaw. We stuff the trout, then we refreeze the trout. Yes. I rest my case. Certified jerk. The chef of the grouper was a strong smell. That's it. That's it. A chef's uh, opinion. It's dinner time, and Gordon is about to see how this fine dining restaurant is anything but fine. Hello, Hi. good evening. Welcome to Cafe 36. Welcome this evening. Would you care to see our wine list? I'll start here with you. Alice, how are they? They're terrific. Would you mm -hmm. be able to do the salmon with your Sure, I can do that. We need a pair of cobia and a salmon, too. I'm very nervous, very nervous and very scared, and we're just hoping for the best. Escargot? What is that? This is the butter that we use for the escargot. It's parsley, chive, garlic. The butter's frozen oh, as well. Yes. What don't you freeze? Here's Chef Ramsey, one of the best chefs in the world, telling Pinto that you're doing shit wrong. In fact, you're doing it bad. It was great to see Pinto eat a little humble pie. What stuff don't you freeze? Give me one ingredient. Like a calamari comes in. Like the calamari. Comes in we never freeze it. So the only stuff you don't freeze is the stuff that comes in frozen. Astounded by what he's just witnessed in the kitchen, Gordon seeks out the owners. Terry and Carol, I'm panicking. Pinto, it's crap. I, um, I don't get what he's trying to do there, Jimmy, in terms of all this fresh, frozen stuff. Everything in, fresh, cut up, portioned, frozen. It's 45 minutes into dinner service, and most customers are still waiting for their food. I feel like I'm drinking more than I'm eating. <laughs> you know, that's probably the reason I don't wear a watch, because it takes a head to longer. The nightmare of Cafe 36 is still food time. Not being able to get your food out of the kitchen really makes your job as a server difficult, because that's pretty much the description of your job, to serve. I think they got to catch the shrimp first. Is this slow? Everything seems so slow. Yes, sir. If you have one more person, then it goes faster. Yeah. If you had one more person, it will go faster? Yes, sir. Eduardo, no wonder you've gone so old. You've aged, waiting for the last main course. <laughs> huh? While the kitchen is struggling to cook the food, Gordon also sees a problem with the delivery. Another departure. Holy crap. I'm not aware of any particular reason why we serve on carts. <laughs> I thought people got pushed into a, right. a mortuary on trolleys, no? Right. Not serving food. <laughs> oh, cheese <geez. laughs> Would you like to hold the plates by the hand, or would you want to push a trolley all day long? I would rather hold them by my hand. When the orders finally make it to the tables, customers find it's not worth the wait. This is rare. This is rare. Is that what you ordered? Uh, no, medium. medium. Bloody rare. Yeah, I might have to send this one back. I'll be right back. Please. The New York's supposed to be medium. Huh? The New York's supposed to be medium. What is it? Medium rare, right? They said Ticket medium. says medium. Okay. They said medium when I was here. Why don't you just put it under the grill, Pinto, as if we're in a position to argue? My things come back, it doesn't mean I'm a bad cook. And it's not just Chef Pinto's cooking that catches Gordon's eye. What are these up here for? They're not even seasoned asparagus, are they? No, not right now. They're very expensive. They're very expensive, so why have you got them on? I beg you off the deck. A veggie of the day. Yes. Aren't you bothered about the cost? Yes, yeah, it comes from the different part of the world, Chef. We, we can get it. It comes from the different part of the world. Are you listening to this? Yes, Chef. 
It's the most expensive vegetable on the market. You want that? And it's out of season. And you just put them on four dishes. This is unbelievable. Tonight, I'm starting to see new cooking techniques that I've never, ever seen before. Slow thaw, fresh frozen, but what's becoming really clear is that he seriously is taking this lovely couple for a ride, and it's got to stop. Is this true about Pinto? He's telling you he's screwing you. Does that, could that be? I hope not. We don't know our ass from a hole in the ground. I'm so scared. During dinner service, owners Carol and Terry were stunned by Gordon's criticism of their head chef, Pinto. We don't know our ass from a hole in the ground. I'm so scared. He opened our eyes to a lot of things throughout the restaurant that people have been taking advantage of us, so we have to take a good, hard look at everything. After a long, difficult dinner service, the customers who have eaten are not exactly thrilled. Chicken's a little overdone. OK, so too soupy and the chicken is overdone. I didn't eat much of my salad because I didn't really care for the dressing. And those who haven't been served are not willing to wait. We got here at 5 after 7. <laughs> OK, so <laughs> five, five minutes, I'll and that's five it. Minutes and I'm done. OK. okay. All right, table five's going to walk out in five minutes. Or is this the pace we move at? Is this the fastest we go? Pinto has one speed, and that speed is fuck you. How long has it been? Gosh. Almost two and a half hours. Some of the customers have given up completely on Cafe 36 and are leaving without even eating an appetizer. It's just been a long day. I have to really take it all in. It hurts. After a rough night, Gordon confronts the staff. Overall, honestly, pretty disappointing, both in the kitchen and the dining room. There's one thing in here that I would change instantly. On the back of my experience today, and that's you. Why? You are the executive chef. You're supposed to be a leader, a motivator. You are seriously, seriously leading this place into bankruptcy. Because the big problem in this restaurant, Pinto, is in the kitchen. Fresh frozen, slow thaw. I think that Pinto deserved every single solitary second of that ass reaming that he got from Gordon. If this was your restaurant, would you be freezing everything, portioning it, and then dropping in bowls of water to defrost it to recook it? Okay. Yes or no? No, I wouldn't. Embarrassing! Do you think I enjoyed it, standing there and listening to this? You know, I'm a proud man. Get the message. Now show me your pride. Chef, because I'm fucking waiting. And unfortunately, whether you like it or not, the two people behind you, it's them you're dragging down. That's why I'm pissed. So cut the bullshit. Get ready for some changes because Cafe 36 needs it urgently. Good night. After witnessing a night of inefficient and bizarre cooking techniques, Gordon's first priority is to implement changes in the kitchen. If there's one thing this restaurant needs right now, it's something authentic, yes? Yes. This restaurant needs a good risotto. You, you and me, we're going to cook a risotto together. Here is all our fresh ingredients. When I say fresh, I mean fresh. I bought them myself this morning. Are you ready? Yes, yes. Let's go. Cooking with the chef Ramsey was, it was pressure. There was a lot of pressure I was on. This is just a really nice, simple uh, porcini risotto. Mushrooms in. They're sauteed already. Finished with Parmesan cheese and a little knob of butter. Make sure you're happy with it. Mushroom risotto. First change, yeah, risotto, yeah. Second change, we'll be taking the plates out tonight by hand, faster and not running up and down with this fucking thing all the way up. Hey, we're going to carry the plates, yeah, by hand. When Chef Ramsay took the carts off the floor, it was great. I hated them from day one, so to me, it was like, yes. <laughs> I do have a usage 
for the trolleys, because tonight we'll come up with a goat's cheese salad special, where you'll be dressed in the salad. Gives us more time in the kitchen, and we'll be doing, like, goat's cheese fritters. I absolutely love the idea of having the salad made at the table side. Sort of a little bit of entertainment and showmanship. Yeah, I mix greens in. Touch of salt, touch of pepper, honey mustard vinaigrette. Yeah? I go to cheese fritters. Yeah, one, two, three, go. Bang. Salad on, madame, and madame. So, light, vibrant, exciting, and more importantly, we're changing today. We're changing. changing. We're changing big time, yes? As Gordon starts to turn around Cafe 36, he knows that what really needs to change is Terry. I'm going to identify your uh, weaknesses and improve your strengths. Right. And, you know, Pinto is a big weakness. And don't ever be intimidated by controlling chefs. And you've got to right. be strong. You must be strong. Absolutely. And I can see that now. And I think a lot of it was I'm more involved in, you know, the mundane daily operation, the mm -hmm. things that I shouldn't be doing and not watching the things that I should, and I can see that now. What's at stake is my dream, and I'm not gonna let anybody take it away from me. And you have got to start being firm, because if you're not firm, they're never ever gonna respect you. Next. I almost fired him on the spot. Order on Pinto. Tempers flare in the kitchen. Talk to each other, guys. Then erupt in the dining room. Cancel my entree. Cancel your entry. Right, I'm leaving. Pinto, executive chef, certified dick. Threatening the grand reopening of Cafe 36. What did we do? How can this happen to us? Hi, good evening. Hi. Welcome this evening. Four. We have you right over here. Lots of people coming. All right, let's rock and roll. Hi, how are Hello, you? Hello, how are you tonight? Good. The feeling going into service, there you are, man. getting all charged up and ready to go, let's all pull together and let's get this roll. The chef has prepared a porcini mushroom risotto today. My special salad is a goat cheese fritter salad. Cheese salad. OK. Two salads. I'm going to have the filet, please. I like your filet. Uh, medium. OK, take control now, yeah? You listen and say yes or no, yeah? Yes, yes. Let's Do go. Masala. Hey, you fill it, yeah? Medium on, yes? New York strip medium, yeah? What's next, please? I got a crab cakes, a smoked salmon appetizer, and an onion soup, please. Right now, I'm pretty stressed out about tonight. I don't want anything to go like last night. We're trying to make this thing smooth the operation tonight. Two risotto, a trout, and a scallop. OK, good. Let's go. Two risotto, yes? Such a presentation. First one I've ever done. Thank you. Looks good. The goat cheese is excellent. But while the special salads are a huge hit, they haven't had their appetizer yet on this table. It's got to be a few minutes. How long has it been since we half hour or so? Cafe 36's characteristically slow service continues to leave customers waiting. 45 minutes already. Right. Well, we go with that one now, yeah? Two salmon, one shank, one thirty-six bill, yes? Working, chef. Working, yeah. How long? Three minutes, four minutes. I'm ready, I'm on. Pinto, change gear. You always know thought changing gear? Yep. Unfortunately, you're still in neutral. Is it the risotto that's taking so much I'm sorry, I don't know why. I, to, I swear it should be the next ticket up. I'm tired of working someplace where I can't get the food out. I can't service my customers. Five has been waiting no less than an hour and 15 to an hour. It's going to be like a five minutes. Right, they told me that like 30 minutes okay. ago. I swear to God. I just think Pinto's making this crap up as he goes along. It's all a lie. Unbelievable. Oh my God. You know, red veggies for one, for two there. That, that, that's what I said. Okay, say it over and over. First time you said one, then two, no, then one. No, I didn't. You said you got one there, and it's two I know. veggies. I said three. Look at the book. Look at the book. Hey, I got shit to do. No, I, I know. Pinto, we have to speed up a bit now, yeah? yeah? We'll work as a team, please, yeah? yeah? Last night you worked as individuals. Tonight we're going to work as a team, yeah? Yes, yeah. Let's go. I'm not having food hanging around tonight. There's no chance. They just got theirs. They were seated before us, so. It's been, it's been a while, though. Chef Pinto, you lied to me and told me it's almost ready. How long, baby? It's going to take a few minutes, bro. I can't fire all these pans. I just can't do it. We're halfway through service, and the good news is we've sold 42 salads, which is great. Sadly, the bad news is that Barney and Pinto, they don't like each other, and that's affecting the service. Things are slowing down, and customers are now starting to complain. Damn. We should have another New York medium, all right? No. You guys aren't even working together. Come on, Barney, you got to keep it driving. Don't let it sink. Let's go. 
I don't know where we are. I don't know what you guys are firing. You haven't called anything out. Huh? I mean, I don't oh, know what's okay. going on. Pinto doesn't listen to me, and I don't know, there's got to be a better system than what we're doing because it's just not working. It's been a long wait. This is cold. It isn't even hot. And not even the center is hot. I'm going to go ahead and take these. This is the entree size portion, correct? That's not an entree. That's appetizer. Pinto really can't cook on the line, and Pinto really can't run a kitchen. On the ticket, it's got risotto dinner. Unbelievable. Barney, talk to your cook, yeah? Let's you go. make it a larger portion. Hey, it's too thick. Pour some more okay. stock in there. OK, I'll thin it down. Oh, my god. Now we're pulling that out. We're going down, boys. Just just two seconds, you. You as well, yeah? Just come here for two seconds. Yeah, I'm not doing that in front of the coach. Come here, you. None of you are talking. You have got to talk together. He needs you, yeah? You need him. So we go back in there and we work at it. If he's sautéing, you've got to expedite. He's trying to expedite, play, and cook. He can't get in front of the ticket, OK? Now, come on! I agree entirely with what Chef Ramsey had to say about our performance this evening. We weren't working together as a team, and it hurt us. It should be up in just moments. So all I'm doing is lying to people right now. That's it. You know, I'm safe. With some of his customers still waiting for their food and others giving up altogether, Brian reaches his breaking point. Now, I got to say two things that are really hard. You're hiding, and you need to be fired. Let me tell you something now. You work for me. I don't work for you. You're a waiter. Remember who you work for. I'm sorry, I don't know why. I, I swear it should be the next ticket up. Tonight, the waiters of Cafe 36 took a lot of heat for the problems in the kitchen, and Brian is truly frustrated. Now, I got to say two things that are really hard. You're hiding, and you need to be fired. Let me tell you something now. You work for me. I don't work for you. Brian made some very harsh comments that were extremely out of place, and it made me very upset to the point that I almost fired him on the spot. But this has gone on way too far. He's not If you don't like learning. working here, and keep your opinion to yourself. I want Terry to start telling everybody what to do instead of letting the inmates run the asylum. You're a waiter. Remember who you work for. After experiencing yet another disappointing dinner service, Gordon is curious to hear what the head chef has to say. OK. Um, Pinto, what do you think about tonight's service? It was, it was excellent. It really was. Everybody got involved. What kitchen were you in? Pardon me? Uh, Barney, truthfully, is that the way you saw service tonight? No, I thought it was bad. It was really rough. Once again, complete different opinions. You're right, though. Service was terrible. Nothing was coming together, no communication, no coordination, no teamwork. Customers waited tonight. They waited big time. What did we do? What's going on? How can this happen to us? What did we do? Let me just give you three major issues that's wrong with this restaurant. The first issue is the service is way too slow. The second problem, the food is too inconsistent. Inconsistency is a killer. The third reason, and one of the most important reasons why this restaurant is not busy, it's not contemporary. A 1970s restaurant trying to compete in the 2008 market. We're behind the times. We are behind the times. OK. I'm going now. I've, I'm working all night. You know, by the time I see you tomorrow morning, we should have a well-put-together plan. Good night. That night, Gordon and his team went to work, doing away with the restaurant's old-fashioned and outdated look, creating a more contemporary restaurant. Right, good, good morning. morning. How are you feeling? No, I'm thrilled. I'm Big day today, excited. yes? Today's relaunch day. We're going to turn it around, yeah, and put it back on the map. In we go. Come through, come through, come through. Oh, wow. oh my How God. cool is this? <gasps> oh, it's God. modern. It's awesome. Oh, it's oh, wow. Oh, wow. We've got a black and white color theme. Yes. And who knew I love black and white so much? Oh, my God. It's been brought up into the 21st century. Beautiful. It's a new restaurant. When I walked in the door, I just instantly felt alive. We've got rid of the old fuddy-duddy stuff. And now it's a really nice, sharp, cutting-edge feel. Uh, I absolutely am getting choked up. It's just, what a dream. 
Hey, look at the plates. I've... No more mismatched china. All the same. It's wonderful. It's amazing. Beautiful. Now that we have matching plates, <laughs> it looks like we know what we're doing back here. The booze have been upholstered. I love the black. Got new chandeliers. I'm just so thankful. It's unbelievable. A Russian can't just survive on a new decor. Yes, it needs a new menu. Yeah, to go with it. So we've gone modern. Yes. Fresh approach. And more importantly, we've condensed the menu. I think the kitchen should respond favorably to the new menu. Unless they screw it up with their usual bullshit, it should work out. It's seasonal as well. We have everything in season. I think that the new menu is going to make the kitchen faster. And before dinner, we'll make sure we taste one of everything. Yes? So you know what you're selling. Tonight, head chef Pinto is cooking from the newly designed menu and has one more chance to prove himself to Chef Ramsay. First of all, just look at the difference. Appearance, plates, portion size. Start from the top, onion soup gratiné, yeah? Perfect for the winter. Crab cakes, grilled chicken sandwich, the grilled albacore tuna, Mediterranean ragu, filet mignon tartare. Uh, you like steak tartare? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> and then one of my favorites, the duck confit. Have a little taste. Get familiar with the uh, taste and textures. I love that tartare. Wonderful. It's a whole new beginning, and Chef Ramsay did that for us. Let's take advantage of tonight, and let's show LaGrange, yes, yeah, what we're made of. With the new menu and decor, Carol and Terry face one of the most important nights ever at Cafe 36. Well, welcome to Cafe 36. We're glad to have you here at our grand reopening. The personality has changed. It's more Carol and Terry's. When the orders come in, can we call out the orders so we got some form of vibrance in here a little bit, yes? Yeah. What do you think of the new menu? I think it's sharp. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, Good. it's night and day. Tonight, we have to be faster, yeah, and keep the standards up, yes? Great chance. Big, big, big night tonight. And personally, I've never, ever wanted a dinner service to work as well as tonight because of Terry and Carol, because they so deserve it. And they're really endearing. But I honestly hope that Pinto doesn't screw this one up. Please, not tonight. Order in. Order on, Pinto. All right, we're coming up with Pinto. Risotto. Order on. Mario, one crab cakes. As the orders make their way to the dining room. Brian. Your food's here. The dinner service gets off to a good start. That's good. Oh, I should have got that. You just got your entrees. How was everything so far? Really good. Good. Okay. Okay. Delicious. Fresh food, simple menu. Love it. All right, am I ever going to get a crab cake with this? Right, talk to me. Next table, tell me, please. Mario, I got a four. Four crab cakes. But barely an hour into service, and the kitchen's bad habits are back. Table number, please. 13, please. 13. How long? Just like uh, six minutes. Oh, my god. That's still not ready? I got every burner full, man. If one empties, I put something else on it, OK? Pinto, we have to go a little bit now, yeah? When you're looking at all these tickets, sometimes things can be a little slow. Pinto, if we go quiet, nothing's happening. Okay. We need some form of voice in here. Pinto was running the tickets. Well, Pinto got behind, but he's the chef. And he should be in control of the situation. All right, come on, guys. You've got to talk to each other. Yes, chef. We just gotta talk to each other, guys. Pinto. 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 Executive chef certified dick. Once again, Pinto's inefficiency in the kitchen is upsetting both customers we wanna eat. and staff. I'm just pissed off. I just can't take this, man. I hope Terry straightens us out. The real problem right now is they can't seem to finish any food back there. It's just like really bad sex. It keeps going on and on, and at some point, you just wish it would be over. Cancel my entree. Cancel your entree? Right, I'm leaving. It's been more than fair. It's been 6.30. Okay. It's been three, three and, and a half hours. Hour. 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 Yeah, it's a little, I've got a pork chop. little hectic tonight. Pinto's got to go. He's just standing doing nothing. I know. I, I agree. Nobody's communicating. No one's even stepping up to the mark. And watch what Barney's doing. Barney's now trying to read the tickets, cook, saute, and expedite. Yeah? And not Pinto is just trying to dress the salad. Not good enough. That's not no, a team effort. Not, he, I can see it from Nothing's been directed. Now. And it's a it's fucking not, it's joke. No, no Unbelievable. Gordon Ramsay really did give me a swift kick in the butt to say, you know, wake up. If you're going to have your business be a success, you have to take charge. What are we waiting on? Where are we at? 
Do I need those two crab cakes right now? Coming up. All right, come on, boat. guys. Hey. I need to get this food out. I got tables I got to turn. We can't fall behind. Thank you, Eddie. Go. All right. Talk to me. What's next? With Terry finally staying on top of his chef. Two steak tartare. Apple salad, crab cake. The kitchen gets back on track. Cheers. Cheers. Wonderful you got evening. Our food. Thank you. Two salmon. There's two salmon in the oven. OK, beautiful. Keep it coming, guys. I got to get this dining room turned over. We got a lot of people waiting. I think Terry's eyes have been opened up. A two risottos. Two risotto plate right there. You know, you should give everybody the benefit of the doubt, but you should also demand performance out of them. That's all I want is just communication. For the first time since Gordon's arrival, the back of the house. Let's see if we can finish these last two tables strong, shall we? Yeah? Yippee. Let's go. Is in sync with the front. Follow, I'm following. Worth yeah. the wait. Worth the wait. Here, here to Terry. Lively. Terry Hello. and Carol. Yeah. And it was Terry who made it happen. You have a beautiful restaurant. Thank you. It is. It's, it's, it's so stunning. much more beautiful. Yes. And an amazing, amazing, amazing potential. Yeah. Very rare you come across a couple today in this industry. On the back of the commitment it takes, the sacrifice, the personal life, you're so unselfish, it's untrue. And you're so perfect for each other. It's extraordinary. And that's quite rare. And I really mean that. I can't tell you what to do with Pinto, but you know my feelings. Mm -hmm. Absolutely but do. when you make a decision, I hope to hell that you don't make it too late. You talked about change, you know, and that we have to do that, and I can't, yes. you know, hold back any longer. No and more we oldies have to on do the radio. And, no more. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing I've learned is I have to definitely be more aggressive in running my business. I have to take full charge and I have to change, and I've already changed. You've done so much for us. Yeah. Mm. And it's just an incredible feeling that you've done that for us. Uh, you, you know, you said we had to get rid of the old, and, and back from the 30s. Yes. 30 years ago. Yeah, so we got to... Oh, you guys. Oh, you're so so this is from our own personal crazy. wine collection. Oh, my God. No, I can't take that. Come on. That's a bottle of Chateau Chem 1976. You said I would 30 years ago, so we're past it. No, oh, God. Can I keep it here for when I come back? Absolutely. And when I come back, we can have a glass together. We would love that. Would you? Absolutely. Yes. God, what are you two <laughs> like? You two, honestly. Honestly, you're like the most perfect mum and dad. Unbelievable. Right. Thank you so much. Oh, dear. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Yes, you. Thank you. And you deserve everything. Thank you. you know that. You stand strong. And you listen to this lady, yes? Yeah. She's the love of my life. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Congratulations. So much. There's absolutely uh, a light at the end of the tunnel. And in fact, it's bigger than just a light. I think there's a whole sunshine coming out. Okay. Best wishes. Thank you. Yes. We got work to do, right? Yeah, we do. No, they do. <laughs> That's tough, really tough. What can you say about a couple that sacrificed so much to get where they have today? And what can you say about a couple that are so devoted to each other? Incredible. I know what you can say. Damn, I hope they succeed, because they deserve to. So much. There is one last footnote to this story. Relaunch night was the last night Pinto worked at Cafe 36. He left the very next day. And Barney was promoted to head chef.